G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Draw with Jazza and today we're talking about cloth. It's taken a while for me to get to this tutorial and the reason is it's not as simple bare bones kind of foundation level explanation as other tutorials. So like anatomy tutorials, it's pretty straightforward. There are places where muscles are, muscles are always in those places. They move in certain ways, blah, blah, blah. Cloth is a bit different because it's extremely sporadic and organic. Um, if you hold up a piece of cloth and drop it, it will fold and fall in a different way every time. If you're wearing a shirt and you pull it down or it's pulled back, it's gonna have different creases every time. So it's not like whatever material you're wearing or outfit you're wearing, the, the folds will always be the same. It's the opposite, they will never be the same ever again. So cloth is less about knowing exactly how to draw the right folds for the right time and place. It's more about an understanding of how these things work. And so we're dividing this tutorial into two parts. The first part, this video, being cloth itself. We're gonna talk about thicknesses of cloth, how folds happen and a few key folds that are good to keep in mind, that are really simple and easy to use. And it's just kind of in your own time learning and understanding how to apply them and make them look good. And the second tutorial is on clothing and it's not on clothing design, but it's how this cloth and these, the different textures and the thicknesses and, and uh, fits of clothing would fit over a human body. Um, so make sure to click on the annotation if uh, you're interested in checking that out or the link in the description. Otherwise, we're gonna proceed. So this, ladies and gentlemen, is why people are intimidated by cloth. You can see in these example photos, the fact of the matter is it's extremely random. Uh, like I said, if you drop a piece of cloth, it's gonna fold differently every time. And looking at this, it's like intimidating as hell. And artists will look at that and be like, I'm supposed to draw that? like. Copying it is one thing. It would be difficult enough to, to redraw these images, but to create it from your own imagination when you're creating your own character or, or anything like that, it can be a really daunting task. So what we're gonna do is look at some of the key basic folds that I've learned to use uh, over the years that help me out. Now, everyone's gonna have different styles and different folds that they use, but these are just a few that I use. <clears throat> So, I mean, I don't claim to be the author on knowledge of folds, but I, ha I know enough to get by. And that's what this tutorial really is about, to know how to know enough to get by. Um, if it's, it's not so much an advanced, it's more a beginner to intermediate tutorial because I'm kind of intermediate, I'm not that advanced. So, some basic things to keep in mind is uh, the weight distribution of the cloth is similar to how like wrinkles work or, or fat, you know, we've, in those tutorials we've, where we talked about wrinkles and fat, um, the s topmost surface levels where the weight is rested are where there are, are no creases. So in uh, like Pixar animation tests, if you ever watch special features of Pixar animation movies and stuff, they always tend to test cloth by dropping it onto a solid object, like a, a three-dimensional ball or square or something just to test how the cloth folds. So we're gonna be doing that on our imaginary three-dimensional object here by drawing our imaginary cloth over the top of that. So we're just gonna have a sheet of cloth that's gonna be draped over the top here. So the top of the ball will be stretched completely flat, like this, okay? So if we imagine we're drawing a sheet, and it might not be square, but the center of this ball is here, okay? Now it's only after where this material starts to fold that this starts to gather, okay? Now, if it were a shorter square of material and it only came down to here, the folds would be all kind of around the, the bottom and be straight down like that. But because we want a really nice long one so we can look at uh, more specific folds horizontally, we're gonna go into that. So the basic flow of the material will be like this, okay? But we know that that's not, uh, that, that looks a bit too tight. It's not loose enough and we don't have any folds. So I wanna show you a couple of folds that I've used fairly consistently. And if you look through my uh, artworks, like on my speed paintings or go on my website and look at my paintings, you will see that these are indeed very, very commonly used folds that I, that I use. 
So the first one is quite simply that. It's an overlap. I'm just going to bring this out here. It's where we have the front line curve in into a line bringing into the fold and overlapping the line underneath. Okay. Now the line underneath could bump out like that. It could, you know, they, they could have different shapes. But the point is that this part of the cloth up here overlaps the underside of the cloth. So another, uh, so I'll just kind of have that separately over here. Might as well make a little, little, the more you know circle. Uh, there you go. So another fold that I like to do is where we bring it down and we have, oops, the fold kind of wrap around the material like that. So bring it over here. Uh, what's happened in this section is similar to here, but kind of in the opposite way. We have our line coming down from the edge of the cloth and instead of overlapping, we have it underlapped. We have the underside of the cloth wrapping around the top, okay? And it kind of wraps around it like that. So that is another fold that I do. So I kind of, I would subdivide this into two categories. We have, uh, we have front folds and edge folds. So these, these two are edge folds. What are front folds? This is a front fold, this here. It's just the line that comes forward and, uh, is more of a, a front facing on thing. These side folds kind of convey the dimension where things are kind of popping out and popping in. Whereas the front folds just kind of show how long that continues on for. So we're just gonna kind of add a, a bunch of rivets here. So this is another way to add folds if we, is we just kind of add our lines like that. Okay, now something to keep in mind is as we bring the folds in, we don't ever have them touch. So let's say, for example, these folds here, if these were converging and it was the same object, even though it's not, they would never touch because that separates the image too much. Now, something we need to constantly think about is where the the uh, edges, where the, where the rims are. So here we have this rim, this popping outy bit, and that continues all the way along here, okay? Now we have this other one up the top here. Okay, now we, they don't connect because this is a bit that pops in and this is a bit that pops in. So this one's on the top and this one's on the bottom. So what we could do is meet them up by having this one go on top. And that way, this, in, this dip in area meets up with this dip in area. Does that make sense? I hope it makes sense. Okay, so first uh, thing to keep in mind with these is where they are the same ridge so this here pops out and this here pops out we don't want them to meet up because if it was one solid line it separates them into two two different things so i just want to have kind of like two areas like that cool so another type of fold that we have i should outline this one first because we just have our simple crease like that ignore the circle that's not part of it but it's just drawing our creases in the folds. Okay, and another one that I like to do, which is pretty simple, is something like this, where it kind of folds into itself like that and then back. So if we look at the ridge, it kind of folds around, kind of comes around like that. Okay, so I'll outline this one over here. It's really simple, it's sort of, um, I can't even draw circles, the sort of, fold like that. It's it's a fun one to use because you can almost approach it like drawing grain in wood. It's this organic sort of flow and things have got to sh change up fairly regularly uh, to keep sort of a, a random look but not be too sporadic or chaotic, not be too repetitious or you know like it's, it's really about maintaining a balance. So as you can see here I'm just kind of adding my lines adding some general creases and this is uh, my rough attempt at draping some cloth over this ball here so if I get rid of my ball 
you can see pretty much, I mean, it gets the point across, that this is this is a cloth, piece of cloth draped over an object because it's flat at the top and the creases happen down here. Now this material looks a bit like a, a fairly thick material. You can see by the way it bunches up in very thick areas. That's the thing we're going to talk about next is how different kinds of cloth fold through showing their cloth attributes. Now there are two parameters. There's loose to tight in terms of the fit. So for example, I'm wearing a fairly tight fitting t-shirt, like it's snug, it's not like super tight, and it's, but it's definitely not loose. Uh, then there's material. So this is a thin material. So the folds are very thin. Uh, whereas thick material like, uh, like wool or leather have very thick folds, okay? So the, the fit itself determines where the folds are and how how long, how strong those folds are, and then the, the thickness of the de material determines how thick those folds are and how many of them there are. So uh, a demonstration that you could either do in your own spare time or at least, you know, imagine, is if you were holding up two scarves, uh, horizontally, no, vertically, this is vertical, up is vertical, and one was silk and one was leather or wool. If you dropped them, the silk one would pile in very intricate, thin-lined patterns, very flowy, very, you know, that, that kind of thing. Uh, the, the woolen one, or the leather one, would be in clumps, okay? Similarly, if you took that, that silk scarf and stretched it really tight, you would see lots and lots of really thin stretch lines all the way across. Whereas, if you did the same with the leather or, uh, or woolen scarf, you would see maybe one or two crease lines because the material is so thick. So that is ex ex essentially what I'm talking about when I'm talking about the, thi the fit and the thickness of the material. So to demonstrate this example, I have my uh, pre-made 3D balls here and I'm going to draw on top of these how I would imagine a material along these parameters would work. So first things first, we have a material that's a loose fit and is a thin material. So this, like, first thing that comes to mind would be something like um, a woman running along the beach in a bikini wearing like one of those, have you seen those really f fairly transparent um, gown things that they wear in those dream sequences? Or like Fabio's shirts, Th those kind of things, are really flowy, thin materials. Okay, so we drape it over the top and it sits over the top hugging it. We don't get wrinkles yet. What happens is as the weight starts to go down, we start to get the folds and they uh, gather in very thin segments. Now, <clears throat> something to keep in mind is that thin material will wrap more evenly around the surface, whereas thick ones will kind of drape out like that, like in our first example. So as this is a thinner material, we'll kind of bring it down like that and we have the folds and as the, the folds start to happen, it's all very thin. There's a very thin oops, draperage. Draperage? I think I just made that word up. I hope I didn't. I just like to sound smart. So I'll bring this one in there like that. And like I mentioned in our other example, it's very much about creating organic patterns. We don't want, every, don't want everything to be too repetitious because this is a thin material. Everything's very sort of thin lines, very sporadic and organic looking. And we use our uh, core folds as a bit of a go-to thing, at least in this example. Now I know that there are many more shapes and folds that material oops, makes than this, than these. But for the sake of this example and for beginners, this is kind of all you need to know to get enough of a demonstration across that what you're drawing is cloth. What we're really trying to do is just communicate what's happening. Uh, if we're drawing a thin material or, you know, if we're drawing someone an outfit, we want someone who's reading it to know, oh, they're wearing leather or, oh, they're wearing a very thin material. Spandex if you're drawing superheroes, that kind of thing. There we go. So this is my, whoops, soft cloth example, okay? So moving down, <coughs> I'm gonna be drawing a tight-fitted thin material. 
So to demonstrate this, I'm going to be having the cloth kind of pinned down uh, with two anchor points over the ball. So same as the top example, it's flat at the top, but it's stretched down immediately at the sides. Okay, and I'm gonna have it kind of come down, oops, like this. So it'll be pinned down. And then I think this one comes out too far. I'll bring it in more like this. Okay, so you can imagine that it's stretched over on the top like that. Now the stretch lines would only really show where the cloth gathers and that would really be at the sides like this and there would be really thin, fairly long stretch lines from the anchor point, which is here, to the point of which it's stretched against, which is out here against the ball. And this would fan out like that. And we really wouldn't get any of those soft organic stretch shapes. So that is basically all we'd need to do to demonstrate that we have a thin material in a tight fit. Next, moving up to our thick material with a loose fit. So like I mentioned, we have this, the, uh, the uh, flat fit at the top. My brain starts to not work. And then rather than falling fairly immediately down like we do with a soft material, thin material I should say, we just kind of clump out a bit and the folds are much larger. So things like uh, those wraparound folds that we talked about, they will just kind of look a bit more like Jabba the Hutt. Yeah, yeah Star Wars references. There we go. And we really don't need much more than that because we're communicating that we have a thick material and it sits on like that. So that there, ladies and gentlemen, is our thick material. I might uh, bring this out. I think this looks a bit too, a bit too rounded. So I want to bring that out like that. And, uh, oops. I don't know what's happening here. There we go. Something like that. So that is my thick material with a loose fit. And then over here we have our thick material in a tight fit. Now in a similar fashion, we're going to drape it over the top and have it pulled down like this with our anchor points. Now on the onset, it will be the same shape. The way it wraps against the ball will be a bit softer, but uh, if it has the same anchor points as here, stretched kind of out like a tent over the ball, uh, the only real difference will be in the lines in, in the way it stretches. Um, so like I said, if you stretch like a th silk scarf, you'll see all those really thin lines and that's like what we have here. Whereas in this example with the thick material, if you pulled on wool or leather, you'd get very minimal lines. So the, the only real difference between these examples would be that the stretch marks, the lines would be thicker and further apart. That's really all we'd need to do. So in zooming out, you can see that it's not so much about having as many lines as possible, but it's where we put those lines and how we communicate the substance of what we're drawing. So even looking at this without anything else there, we can see that this is a thin material draped loosely, and this is a thick material draped loosely. Over here, this is a thin material stretched tightly. This is a thick material stretch tightly. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I've, uh, in the PDF example that I have in the download, download link, I have a, a JPEG, which is just this ball. So you can practice do, drawing your cloth on, on balls. <laughs> balls. Uh, and until next time, I will see you later. Make sure to check out the other tutorial about uh, clothe, cloth on human bodies because it will be having a bit more of a context to what we've talked about here. Thanks for joining. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. You can download the reference files from this tutorial by clicking the link in the description. And remember to share any art, animation or game you make on newgrounds.com. Until next time, see you later.